Welcome to the show, guys. Joseph Robert, the fantasy football counselor. And in this episode, we're very uncomfortable. On this show, we got Tim, the bald guy here in his mullet haircut picture. I guess he's having camera trouble. We're talking five wide receivers. We're very uncomfortable with drafting. Welcome to the show, Tim. Tim, that's not a very good image of you there. You just got like this Halloween mullet. Man, if you're wondering why I'm wearing the hat, it's actually one of my wife's beach hats. I don't know what this thing is. I just I figured let's get uncomfortable here, and uh, it's going to be a very uncomfortable show. That's kind of the theme of this, right, Tim? <laughs> All right, so five wide receivers that were very, very uncomfortable with drafting. I want to make this interactive, guys. Drop a comment below. Let me know which wide receivers or any players you're really uncomfortable with the drafting. Make sure you guys do grab the 16-round draft solution. Use code SMASH to save. Sleepers, breakouts, auto players, draft each round. Everything you need to crush your leagues. And, man, you're going to be light years ahead of the sheep. I'm telling you, it's going to be amazing. I'm excited, man. Hopefully for the people that are in the commute, uh, make sure you guys jump over to the YouTube channel so you can see my fancy hat. What do you think of my – well, my wife's hat. What do you think of the hat, Tim? <laughs> it's, it's, I'm uncomfortable wearing it. It's not comfortable. What can I tell you? <laughs> I thought, well, I'm, I'm, I'm matching with the theme here, all right? So why don't we start off with the first player here? There isn't anything in the – news here that I really want to talk about here. Why don't we just get to the players that were really, really uncomfortable drafting? I'm, I'm really uncomfortable with your picture. It's like staring at me here. It is a creepy picture for sure. All right, let's get, oh yeah, oh yeah smash it, tap it, slap it. We have the new t-shirts out as well, Tim. It's a, it's a lion, smash, tap it, slap it. And you got the slap it on the back. Dude, you guys got to get your shirts, man. Tim, I got to get you one as well. We got to get you fitted. <laughs> All right, well, Tim, why don't we get to our first player here that we're very uncomfortable with drafting here. And guys, go get your T-shirts, by the way. You guys are going to love it. First player, Tim, is Nico Collins. Diggs was the one. He's a target hog, 160 targets plus last year. We're talking about a guy that's going to demand the ball. He's a bit of a diva, obviously. And Nico Collins is there. And Nico is coming off in the second round. Nico, Diggs, and you got Tank Dell, who could be the one as well. You got Mixon. You got the tight end. You got all these options. And he's coming off very early. So I'm extremely uncomfortable with a guy. Well, again, I've said this in many videos, but I, you know, more people are waking up to this, how ridiculous how second round ADP is. Coming off in round two is absolutely ludicrous, Tim. Absolutely ludicrous. Way too expensive for you know, target dilution, pretty much, right? Very, very uncomfortable drafting him. Let us know in the comments. What do you think of Nico? Are you investing a second to third round pick? I think he is extremely, extremely expensive. Chris Alave is the next guy here. Tim, this is your guy here. I mean, why are you uncomfortable drafting Derek Carr's number one guy with minimal competition? They got Rashid Shahid, they got Kamara. He's going to have to step it up from five touchdowns on last year. He has to. Yeah, so I thought last year with Derek Carr, he was primed to get great numbers. Derek Carr's a good throwing quarterback and everything, but oh, it just... What, what's going on? What's this image here? How'd this happen here? Oh, am I back now? Yeah, yeah, and there's a picture of like a green goblin. What is this thing? What is it? Oh, that's that's my guy. That's my guy. That's me. What is that? That's me today. That's Tim. Guys, if you're in the car, I don't know what Tim's got something planned. He's making me feel uncomfortable. He's got some picture of a blob thing on the, on the screen. What is this? He's friendly. I I think he's a sloth. I think. Okay. Sloths okay. Sloths are nice. Okay, so we're gonna continue. Back to the show. Yeah, yeah. Back to the show. Okay, so what's going on? Tim? Okay, what's so that? Olave. So Olave, I was really high on him last year. I thought with Carr coming in, Olave being a nice, young, dynamic player, I thought, man, Carr normally throws for a lot of yards. Everything should be great. Olave's going to yeah. do good. And he did well. I mean, he had a good amount of yardage. He had a good amount of receptions. Problem was the touchdowns were crap. Yeah. And and why do we think it's going to be any better this year? So going back and looking at it, Yes, Carr does throw for decent yardage all the time, but his touchdowns are normally pretty lousy. He normally gets like mid-20s for throwing touchdowns. That's not good enough. So to me, where Olave finished last year is pretty much where he's going to finish again this year. So why why the all of a sudden gets the big jump in ADP? To me, it's, it's not justified. And you can't just say, well, Michael Thomas is gone. Uh, who cares? Thomas did nothing last year. Nothing, nothing. And, and you know... I don't see a high ceiling for Alave, and he doesn't excite me, but I think he's just a safe guy. And I don't like drafting safe guys in the second round for sure. And, dude, I just, I'm a little distracted by this picture here. I, I just don't understand what is going on. Like, where Do are I you? Do I make you uncomfortable? 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is this, a stuffed animal you want at a carnival or something? Like, what is it? That's pretty much what it is. Yeah. He's he's like a big dude, though. He's, he's four footer. He's one of the mega prizes. <laughs> That's very uncomfortable. That's Even good. More- more uncomfortable than the picture we saw last, okay, of, of you in the mullet. Mission accomplished, baby. Stepping it up. All right. We'll go to my next guy. Can we move on here to the next guy, or is this thing going to like come well, out? Well, no. That's my guy. What are you talking about? We're good. Let's move on to your next guy. All right. My next guy is DJ Moore. Again, you guys heard me talk about these guys being overdrafted, and he's literally being drafted based on last year's stats, and like it's like the mainstream sheep and everybody that's put these rankings together is completely disregarding the fact that it's a totally new offense with Keenan Allen and Romo Duse with the top wide receiver prospects and a rookie quarterback. And yet DJ Moore is coming off round three to four ludicrous, man. I'm very uncomfortable with him. I, I know I'm not drafting him. I'm just more uncomfortable. With the fact that he's even there, like, why is he even like, <laughs> I'm uncomfortable seeing him come off so high. Yeah. The ADP is way too high, especially with the addition of Keenan Allen. And then you, like you say, you throw Caleb Williams into it as well. Like no way. There's just too much going on. Overall, not an impressive team offensively. Like, yeah, they might do pretty well this year with Keenan Allen and DJ Moore, but I don't think there's going to be anything special. And then why would you think DJ Moore is that much better than Keenan Allen? I I just don't see it. Yeah, absolutely, man. Way too overpriced. And it's a three-headed monster. I don't get it, man. You got JSN, you got DK Metcalf, all these guys coming off very, very early in three-headed monster wide receiver committees. When you get value later, I keep talking about this on my shows. I want to emphasize this point home. Do not waste early draft capital on DJ Moore. It's going to make you feel uncomfortable in the season if you draft him. Very simple, okay? All right, let's move on to the next guy here. And uh, this is your guy, and I like him. Garrett Wilson's our... What the heck is going on? Tim, what is going on with... What the... What? What's going on I'm, here? Dude, we're filming. I'm at, I'm at home. What are you talking about? Oh my, I don't think you realize, but the camera's on. You somehow managed to get get on screen. Like, dude, what the heck is going Do you do this during the podcast? Hey, don't ask, don't tell. You know, what people don't know happens behind the camera. It's all okay. good. Okay, I seriously didn't know this was going to happen, but Tim is actually in a hot, what is this, a hot tub? With nah, the- whatever. It's just why are you making it weird? Oh my goodness. Okay. Don't, so don't sweat it. Let's, let's move on. Come well, on we here. did not plan this at all. I wasn't expecting this at all. Guys, if you don't know, um, we had a show where we said we're going to be uncomfortable. I thought he'd wear a dress or something. And I really thought he had camera issues and it turns out that he's in a hot tub with inflatable dolls. Like what is going on here? Tim? Let's, was, let's be professional here. Okay. We've got a job to do. Let's, let's do our job. <laughs> Don't you worry about what goes on behind closed doors. All right, let's continue with this. This is making me feel extremely uncomfortable. Is that wee man in the back there? Aye, that's my wee man. (laughs) If you guys don't know, uh, Betty and wee man are... Betsy. Betsy. Oh, you. (laughs) Don't insult my lady. Well, you got to go to YouTube to see it. Anyways, Tim, so let's move on. Okay, so Garrett Wilson. Yes, sir. And I know you love him, but I'm, Mm -hmm. I'm still skeptical, man. I mean... Let's let's face it. I've said it before. Everything depends on Rodgers. Rodgers is 40 years old, <laughs> coming back from a torn Achilles. Everybody's putting their faith in him right now when it comes to Garrett Wilson. The price is so high. He's a first rounder. I got so many questions with what's going on in this scene. We've got Vaseline. We've got Betsy. We've got Wee Man. Like, so many questions. Mm, mm, mm. Let's just say <laughs> I know how to live a good life, all right? Leave it at that. <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right. The next guy here again, Garrett Wells. I have no, I'm not uncomfortable at all with Garrett Wells. I think he's going to have a boom year. First round pick and a first round. Okay. Aaron Rodgers is going to come back. What happens if Aaron Rodgers is not ready? What happens if he can't finish his throw? Uh, properly? Of anybody. What happens if Matt Stafford breaks his uh, leg? There's a lot more likelihood in a 40 year old. That's just coming back from a torn Achilles. Good point. I guess so. Yes. Like yeah. that's what bothers me, man. The, the, capital the price here is just first round guy and it all depends on aaron Rodgers. if aaron Rodgers isn't ready to go garrett wilson you'll be lucky if he finishes top 15 wide receivers yeah i mean i i like him i like the stealing like the upside i think aaron Rodgers. i i heard aaron Rodgers in an interview saying something along the line like if you know if i'm playing i'm playing to win the super Bowl. i'm not just playing to come out and just 
you know, throw the ball and get hurt again. He's playing to actually succeed, you know? So, and listen, I like him. I've always liked him, but he is a very up and down quarterback too. Like he'll, he'll throw for 40 touchdowns one year and then he'll throw for 25 the next. And yeah. there's no rhyme or reason about it. You can't say that he lost great players or this. No, man, that's just the way he's been in his career. He's had like one or two good years. Then he's had two bombs. Then he's had another good year. Then he's had two bombs. It's just, right. it's, oh, it's, it's a lot to put on Wilson. Uh, I don't know. I, I believe in, I believe in Wilson. I believe in Rogers. I think there's a ton of ceiling Garrett Wilson, major boom type year. All right. Last guy here. I'm very uncomfortable. I'm almost, a, why are you talking to Betsy? <laughs> what'd what? you say what'd she say to you? i'm curious what she said dude just do your final guy no Why? she said something to you i'm curious what she said Can no she i was asking her if she's okay if she needs anything i mean i'm <laughs> kind of pushing down on her chest a little bit here <laughs> i, I want i'm curious if if the session has started yet or did we interrupt something has it started <sighs> well you can see the blue bottle behind i don't know what else to tell you <laughs> Oh man, you guys got to go to YouTube if you're in the car, man. It this is something else. Okay, so last player here, I've got his name up here. Uh, it looks like I'm gonna puke, but it's <laughs> but Puka Nakua. I, you know, the name is kind of you know in timing with what's going on. Uh, Puka Nakua here. Uh, listen, at the end of the day, man, Coop, I can't focus. <laughs> <laughs> I make you uncomfortable. I don't understand. I mean, you took this to another level, but um, listen, Puka, at the end of this, the day, I have no stock in him. I've drafted a bunch of leagues. I got one more league to draft and uh, some high stakes leagues, and I just keep overlooking him. I, you know, again, I love the ceiling, love the upside, love the talent. He's explosive. He's exciting. He's young. He's dynamic. You know, got an aging Stafford and you got Cooper Cup. A healthy Cooper Cup is going to demand the ball. He's going to see a uh, target dilution unless Matt Stafford says, okay, Puka's our guy. We're going to move forward with him. He's going to be our guy. I just don't see a first round return on investment with Cooper Cup being healthy. So the talk of Cooper Cup being hurt, very possible, but you can't draft based on that. That's it. Yeah, but you know, Cooper Cup played like 10 games last year. It's not like he missed a ton. Yeah, 10 games isn't even, it's like a little more than half a season. But yeah. in those 10 games, he really didn't do much either. I think he had 50 receptions. Yeah. Or was it more up in the 60, 70? Either way, it wasn't enough to like say, ah, now that he's going to be healthy, Puka is going to take a big step back. There's no way. Cup, Cup had one monster year. That's it. One monster. He's, he's had one monster and one good year. And that's last, it, guys. Last year, 12 games, 59 receptions, 737 yards, five touchdowns. Great to six for Puka. And again, you look at that, six for Puka, five for Cup, and Cup right. played 12 games. Can you imagine if Cup played the entire season? No, had- that's, that's touchdowns. And touchdowns are important, but more so for a receiver, yardage and receptions, which Puka is going to get. And then the touchdowns will follow. One year further in, I think Cup takes a little bit bigger of a step back in the in the touchdown area. So, um, you know what else they got? They got Kyron too. Like I, this ain't Cup anymore. It's not Cup's team anymore. Let's put it that way. I'm a little uncomfortable with uh, with, <laughs> with what I'm seeing here. <sighs> All right. Well, it's a short one today. Like the little wee man. <laughs> hey, you can't say that. That's going to get us in trouble. Short one. Uh, wee man. Anyways, uh, again, this episode has been completely uncomfortable. And that was the whole point of it. We're having some fun here with you guys. I don't know what Tim was doing. I know I. <laughs> oh, I froze. Right. Oh, right. Actually, that's a good picture to freeze at. <laughs> I think the I think we should just keep you like this. <laughs> yeah, that, well, that's we'll actually a we'll funny you, freeze. We'll, we'll keep the camera running. I think the camera and the program has had enough for you. It's gonna so, keep you. <laughs> okay, so let's cut back to this and just say, "Oh my God, look at you broke the internet. You're so uncomfortable." We're gonna keep it. We're not editing. You're not coming back in. We're just keep everyone. We're we're gonna leave this raw. You froze. <laughs> we're gonna keep it at this image to wrap the show up. Do I make you horny? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to go back to this image. This image was a lot better. What do you think? <laughs> we're going to end off with this image. It's a little more appropriate. All right. That's it, man. I mean, this really, really fulfilled the, the topic of the show. Fantasy football wide receivers are players that we're completely uncomfortable with, Tim. I mean, you really took it to another level. 
<laughs> All right, guys, smash it, tap it, hit the thumbs up. Let, let us know what you guys think is going on here with Tim and uh, his players, his friends here. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Turn on that bell, subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. If you're in the car driving, pull over, go on YouTube, and uh, you'll see what's going on. <laughs> All right, guys, have a little fun. Get a, good, get a couple laughs. We'll talk soon, guys. Thanks, Tim, for the entertainment, man. Okay, we're out, guys. Craziness. Craziness.